conversation series that begins our community from across the globe together. I'm Victoria Panasenko, Miss Universe Ukraine, and I'm so excited to be here celebrating the win of the National Costume Award. I'll be joined by some very special guests in a moment, but first I want to thank everyone who voted me and explain a little bit about this win, win means to me, really. I'm so happy and really proud because uh, Ukraine win the national costume first time in history. It means a lot for me and gives me opportunity to speak with you now. I agree, I'm really grateful for you, for your support, me and my country. I also, I want to say that I take a part at the Miss Universe not for the awards or eager. I'm a part of the country of 40 million people and all of us right now fight on our front line. Uh, for, as for me, I fight for the truth and peace on informational and cultural front and do everything possible to our victory. As uh, about my national costume, uh, it's a really interesting story because a lot of people, a lot of our Miss, a lot of countries proposed me to go abroad to prepare to Miss Universe and create national costume in other countries. I choose really difficult way uh, and um, it was my own challenge because I chose to create my national costume in the war. It was really difficult. I refused and stayed in Ukraine and was doing it between the everyday air raid alerts, blackouts and volunteer work. I studied for a social worker, but the hardest lesson of humanism, love and care for people I'm learning right now. And I want to say that I can find something beautiful in this. Now, like all Ukrainians, I can find light in the darkest times. I can be brave and invincible. I know how in the face of war, misery, torturous, humiliations and cold, be strong in your values. Values that are freedom independence, dignity. Warrior, warrior of Light is uh, its costume show real soul of Ukrainians and gives strong message to the world. Also want to say that it's really important sign for every woman who right now fight for their rights, for their future, who don't afraid to say the truth to the world and don't, uh, don't afraid to be themselves. And I'm really happy that my custom win. Uh, also, I want to tell you a little bit about details of my national costume. As I said, my costume civilized our nation's fights against the darkness. Um, I was inspired by Archangel, Archangel Michael. Uh, it's Erchengel, it's very main character because cross of legend, uh, an army of legends, uh, 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 I'm so sorry for my English, <laughs> according of legend, an army of, it's sometimes problem with English, it's okay, it's okay, we can repeat it, <laughs> according of legend, an army of angels, led by him, defendant and true Satan from heaven. Like all Ukrainians right now, we fight with darkness. We fight with big evil. And I know that we will win. Also, uh, Saint uh, Michael um, is protector of people and guardian of the army. Also, this angel is patron of Kiev. That's why I choose him and it gives me real power on the stage. Um, and uh, I feel that at that moment, I feel that all Ukrainian people stay with me on the stage. Uh, my initial costume consists with monolithic gemsuit. It symbolizes armor, 
white dress consists uh, of stylization of Vishivanka with puffy sleeves and skirt that has more than 10 meters of fabric to it. It's like on me, <laughs> it's also Vishivanka. Uh, on my head was uh, headwear is decorated with pickles, which are traditional in Ukraine. And also the wings. Symbolic wings are born in the battle, framed in a blue and gold armor in the colors of Ukrainian flag, and decorated with various mirrors ornaments opened for the sective battle. Uh, the costume was created in Ukraine in four months in extreme conditions to the towns of Syrians without electricity, without materials, and by candlelight. It was really difficult, I remember it, but I think uh, my designer is less apathetic. She's really amazing and very talented person, and I'm so happy that I chose her. Uh, for this national costume. Also, an interesting fact about my national costume, I had two wings. And um, it happened because um, five months before the Miss Universe, I met uh, the crook Fizzer, and we decided to create mechanical wings. You saw it on the stage. Uh, it was five meter wings, it also have armor uh, with Ukrainian symbol and um, color. But because of the war, it wasn't not possible to bring them to Ukraine. Realizing that situation is really critical and we need to do a photo shoot in Ukraine, Les Patika, my designer, created the wings that you saw on their photo shoot in seven days. Without light, I remember that period, it was really difficult because we had missile attack and I think she did something impossible, really impossible. And I'm really, really proud of her. I repeat it every time. She's really amazing. After Miss Universe, I sold the swings from my national costume by Lesa Pataka and collect more than ten thousand dollars i transferred the money to the kind deeds charity organization um, and uh, this organization uh, production to protests for ukrainian military and it's it's real big symbol for me because my wings ha help somebody uh, to bring new life um, one of the reasons I'm most happy about this win that the Miss Universe organization is making a donation to a charity of my choice in celebration of this win. And I'm so excited to announce that I'm doing this to the United Nations Global Compact Network Ukrainians Project Mental Health. They are proposed is provide free psychological services to people affected by Russia's war against Ukraine. It's such an important and effective tool to help Ukrainians return to a fulfilling life. And I'm so grateful for it because I worked with this project one year and I live in the war one year. I understand how it's stressful because you live in constant stress every time and i think that this organization did do very very good job uh, and here here to join me and talking about this important mission are titana saharuk the executive director and alina konovalenka the director to operations of united nations global compact ukraine Let's welcome to them to the stream. Hello, girls. I'm so happy to see you. Tatiana and Alina, thank you so much for being here with us today. For those in the audience who are new to this mission, can you explain a bit about the work that you do? Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, we both are from United Nations Global Compact Network in Ukraine. 
Global Compact is the world's largest corporate sus sustainability initiative. In 2000, Kofi Annan, the United Nations Secretary General, invited all businesses around the world to become a driver for changes for good. Today, we have more than 18,000 participants uh, in our network. In Ukraine, we were the most fast growing network, local network in Eastern part of Europe. But when the war started, we needed to refocus our usual activity and uh, think about our response to the war. Uh, last year, we launched the project Mental Help. Uh, it unites professional therapies with people who need the professional psychological support the most. And uh, I think Alina may share more details on our results. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Tatiana. And greetings from Kyiv. My name is Alina. I'm director of operations at the UN Global Compact in Ukraine. And on August 9th, we launched a unique user-friendly platform that is called Mental Health, where every Ukrainian, regardless of age, gender, and social role, can receive the necessary psychological assistance. And more than 7,000 individual online consultations with therapists have been held. And through this project, we promote a culture of seeking psychological help and trying to overcome stigma. I want to say that uh, uh, I start, wo start work with the United Nations on August 29th. And when I was informed that you start to make this project, I, I want to say that you do very important job uh, right now because a lot of people lost their loved ones a lot of people lost their property and uh, as i said before a lot of people live in constant stress to make to have um psychological help sometimes it's really expensive for many people and uh to have opportunity have free psychological help uh, right now it's really important that's why i start start to work with this project what first, I want to ask uh, you also, what first interested you both in working with this project and how did you come to be? I may share my personal story. Uh, we both, me, Alina, and other members of my organization uh, were in Kiev when the war started. I woke up at 5 a.m. in the morning because of explosions near my home. I took my kids, my parents, my cats uh, in a car and tried to leave the city. But thousands of people tried to do the same. And it took me almost four days to make 700 kilometers distance uh, to Warsaw. Uh, I was the only driver in a car. I wasn't able to sleep for four days because uh, we needed to move constantly for every 15 minutes uh, for one car distance. Uh, and I was completely exhausted when I finally crossed the border. My husband, my brother left uh, in Kiev because they were needed at that time there. And uh, I became alone uh, with nine people dependent on me in a foreign country without local language or without home without school for my kids with many many problems and uh, i needed to solve all them in a very limited time because we needed to continue and of course i thought about my team where they are how to help them to escape from the war in poland i saw many desperate ukrainian people they were everywhere they didn't know what to start doing or where to go yes and during this time i'll continue and share this story from my perspective that during this time we have been uh, in several roles from those who ran away from the war to those trying to adapt to a new country and then to return to a completely different country ukraine 
it's tough. And I went through this path with my therapist and it was easier for me. But I always thought about those who could not afford such services and those who were in more uh, complex conditions. And people lost their loved ones, homes, jobs, and their faith in the bright future. And uh, we wanted to give them a helping hand. And mental health could become this helping hand. And on this platform, we help children and adults um, who can be support for children. And it is really important to help people adapt to a new reality. Also want to ask what the challenges of starting a project like this in the midst of war? Uh, first of all, people. How to find in a limited time uh, people who are experts, who are in Ukraine, who can join the project, who who are is uh, in more or less safe environment, who has light at that time when it is needed. It was the great challenge to find a team of professionals. Uh, the second challenge was to find financial support for this project. Uh, when we were in Poland, uh, we usually met with my uh, team, with Alina and other uh, team members in a cafe with a free internet and tried to research where to find donors. We sent hundreds of emails everywhere to companies, to organizations, uh, to donors, trying to convince them uh, in our project uh, to explain what we are doing and why do we need those money. Uh, and it kept us alive, really. Uh, it helped us to overcome our own problems uh, at home because everyone had the same at that time. And fortunately, we found uh, a small donor for a very small uh, amount of money but it gave us hope it gave us wings like uh, in your costume uh, and we realized that we can do this project we started from the online platform we created it and uh, while it was it has been created we find out uh, three more donors and we launched the project uh, finally and nowadays we have these uh, tremendous results um, but the project continues uh, and it requires continuous financial support. This is our biggest challenge today. I know that nearly 85% of users are women. Why do you think that is? I believe that uh, several factors could have caused this. And uh, the first one is that our society still has a stigma and women are more open for everything new. Uh, the second one is that too many roles have built on women and it's hard for them to cope independently. And the third one is that against stereotypes and men are less likely to seek any kind of help, including psychological one. My initial question was focused in a part of the strength of Ukrainian people, especially the women. Can you describe in your eyes the strength and the, and the resilience you see in the women of Ukraine? Oh, yeah. Uh, I would say that uh, in one day, in February last year, uh, we forgot about two things, COVID and gender inequality. Every woman received all rights to do what she can and even more. In one day, women in Ukraine changed uh, from a housewife. She became a volunteer or even a soldier. Women needed to earn for their families. They needed to change their profession. They needed to start and lead their micro businesses to be able to help their family to survive. And uh, our women are the best, uh, and I am so proud to be Ukrainian as well. Me too, me too. It's really because I think that Ukrainian women it's, has really strong superpower. And um, 
I want to ask also why is it important to provide mental health services, not just focus on aid concerning food and shelter? That's a great question. And uh, first, food and shelter are essential. Yes. And then the question is what to do next? And we provide people with psychological support so that later they can pull themselves together and provide themselves with this food and uh, to restore their homes. So we decided to focus on the fact that many Ukrainians now are in the state where they need help to adapt to a new reality. And with the proper support and motivation, they can move on. And it's a long-term project, so we want to support the health and well-being of the entire nation. And we need to start doing this right now and restore psychological health of Ukrainians just from this moment. So it's what we are doing now. Mm -hmm. Have there been any particular rewarding experiences for you working on this project? The biggest reward for us is uh, feedback from our participants. Uh, when we see that uh, the person uh, said that he started breathing again, or when we see a feedback from mama, uh, moms of a 12 years old boy who uh, became a witness of death in Mariupol and who spent many days uh, in a bomb shelter without proper food, eating snow instead of water. Uh, and when we see that this boy started to speak after many months of keeping silence, or uh, when we know that he stopped hiding food under his pillow when he goes to sleep, this is our biggest reward. And uh, of course, we are proud when media uh, says about our project. And we were really grateful to the Ministry of Health of Ukraine, uh, who um, appreciated our project and uh, uh, recommended it to Ukrainian people. It's really great because, as you said, Sometimes uh, many people right now don't understand what really happened in Ukraine, what uh, really happened with people, what psychological trauma they have. And this project really helped people to start new life. I want to ask also, what is the future of this project? What are your hopes for the people of Ukraine? We continue. Uh, this is the main achievement of uh, UN, uh, UN Global Compact Network in Ukraine. We continue this project. Uh, uh, we see how great our online platform is. But at, this, at the same time, we understand that it's impossible to provide psychological support, expert support to all Ukrainians who need it. In accordance with the Minister of Health of Ukraine, more than 15 million Ukrainians need ecological support. And we understand that no one online platform or uh, physical cabinet of psychologists would be able to solve this issue. Mm -hmm. That is why we try to enlarge our project and uh, our next idea is to open community centers that would be able to gather people together and uh, give them opportunity to help each other. Uh, because many people who have the same problems uh, may just support, uh, give a word to support to another person to keep him or her alive. Uh, this is our idea. Uh, we plan to launch the first community center in Zaporizhia. This is the city where people from occupied territories came. Uh, this is the first city on the border with the uh, non-controlled territory. And uh, we hope that this project would be able to help many people, thousands of people, uh, to receive this uh, breeze of life okay. and of course uh, one more one more idea that uh, we plan to launch uh, is education uh, we see that we don't have enough uh, 
skills, enough knowledge in Ukraine on how to deal with people with trauma. And we see that we need to teach HR in companies, police officers, fire departments, nurses, teachers, how to deal with people who were in trauma situation. And that is why we are looking for expertise uh, all over the world. Uh, we need experts who would be able to suggest methodics how to provide knowledge uh, to Ukrainians in this situation. And uh, of course, we need uh, financial support for uh, all these ideas, but uh, as well as financial support, we need expertise. I think so many people want to know uh, what can they do at home to help this project? Um, well, the best way to help the project is to support it with the donation. And for your contributions, the project therapies will professionally support those Ukrainians who really need it right now. So we, we are extremely grateful for donations. And these donations give the fa face in the bright future to all Ukrainians who use this platform. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are both obviously female leaders in your own lives. Can you tell us about your experiences becoming such an amazing leaders? Where are there challenges along the way? I'd say the main idea is to challenge yourself. Uh, when I was 30, 33, uh, 33 years old, uh, we moved to a small city with my family. I had two kids uh, and I decided to uh, find a new job. I was a lawyer. Uh, I went to a recruiting agency and a young lady, like 18 years old, said that uh, in your age, with the kids, you have no option to find a job. It was a challenge for myself, uh, and I decided that I don't want to be an employee anymore. I want to be an employer, and I want to promote uh, these ideas uh, to Ukraine, that uh, everybody is equal, uh, notwithstanding the age or gender. Uh, and it was my challenge that was not supported by my family at the time because uh, I was a successful lawyer. Uh, I earned money and it was great success, I'd say. Uh, when I came to Global Compact, uh, I was the only person in this uh, initiative. I didn't have uh, money, I didn't have team, I didn't have even office. And uh, I realized that this is something that I may try to solve. And to do it, today we have a great team uh, with the office in the city center um, with great projects, uh, international and local ones. And uh, we see feedbacks from our participants that we are doing a great job. This is my uh, report. Thank you for your experience. Alina? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Th let's talk about motivation. Yes. Um, when I was 16, my father passed away and I had to make solid decisions faster. It's a considerable challenge, really. Then the university where I was fearless in taking the lead and I was the head of the group, uh, took part in students' activities and found my first job. And I believe that developing empathy, building long-term trustful partnerships with people and being open to everything new are crucial factors in leadership development. And the world is full of opportunities and you just m must see them. And I can be rejected 50 times, but I will try this 51st time and I will be accepted. Uh, and there are always a lot of challenges and I try to solve them or to ignore them if possible. As I said, every time brave and strong women not born in comfort zone, they made in fire and you're a great example of it. And I'm so proud that I can work with you and that I know you. Uh, also, I want to ask you, what is your advice to people? specifically young women who want to become forces for change in their communities? I would say do not wait. 
help is needed here and now. And it is never a good enough moment to start. Just start today from a sm small thing. And I believe that good projects always find partners. Mental health is a great example. And don't be afraid to ask for help and to ask questions. That's really important because we often think that we can do everything by ourselves. But moving forward is more manageable when you have support and when you have a good team. And I'm grateful to our team that together we can make impact. That's very important. And thank you. Thank you for this question. And thank you. And, every, and thanks everyone who who is watching us. You are all leaders. I want to also say thank you both again so much for joining me today to talk about this important mission. I so appreciate you sharing your insight and perspective. And it's been an honor to chat. So we thank you again for your time. As a reminder, please tell the audience where they can go to help and any social media accounts they should follow to stay updated. Yeah, thank you everyone. You can uh, find us online and we would be extremely grateful for any kind of donations to the project and any kind of support. We are really open for partnerships and we will um, leave the link where you can come to see and check our platform and even to use our services uh, if you speak Ukrainian. Also, we have an Instagram account, Mental Health, uh, so our audience can follow this page. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share our experience and to share information about mental health project. Uh, I hope that if you have some expertise, uh, you will approach us uh, through uh, social media or through our site, uh, and we will be grateful for any ideas uh, uh, to work together. Thank you again. Thank you again for joining and us at home, the Miss Universe team will be adding some links to help in their social challenge and episode description below. And I want to say thank you again to all those who voted for my national costume. It has been a great win for my country. And I want to say that remember that you are strong, you're beautiful, you're so powerful, and you must fight for your dream, for your beliefs, and for your future. And also, I'm infinitely grateful for this conversation, and I'm convinced that good will definitely win the light will overcome the darkness. See you soon. Miss Ukraine Universe and United Nations Global Compact. Goodbye, guys. <laughs>